Hello to everyone. Again, we are in First Presbyterian Church Sanctuary, Natchez, Mississippi. I'm Joan Gandy, the minister here at the church, and John Gates, our organist and director of music, is here to provide some music for us as we have a short Bible study together and end with uh, more music. Welcome to everyone. I'm glad that you decided to join us today. The text that I've chosen is from a story about the life of Ahab, who was a king in Israel from about 875 to 854 BC or BCE, if that's your pleasure. Ahab, in one way, is known for his wife Jezebel because together they were quite a pair and they for many years dominated the people uh, that Ahab had been led by God uh, to um, be king of. The story that we'll read today is a well-known story from the stories of Ahab. It is the story of Naboth's vineyard. This particular story came to me as an appropriate reading this time that we're in now in a time of pandemic, when we are beset both by troubling experiences and by blessings, large and small. The story reminds me of the way I heard people describe things happening to them during this pandemic. Finding ourselves deprived of certain things on the shelves of our stores, for example, especially in those first few weeks of the pandemic, we slowly began to understand that we had become pretty spoiled, pretty privileged. We found we could do very well without some of the particular brands of things that we were accustomed to. We found that it was okay not to get in our vehicles and drive for a long distance frequently. We found out a lot of things about ourselves, that we enjoyed our family time because we were settled in together for longer periods of time, and it became a blessing for us to have that time together. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't some other uh, results of having a lot of that together time as family. I know that it also caused people to lose a little bit of their privacy that they uh, enjoyed, and there were other things that certainly must have cropped up during those first weeks especially as we became used to this time. But in general, I think that many of us have learned a new kind of contentment in this time. In the midst of being unsettled by being separated from one another, there is still a kind of contentment that we have learned. Ahab, on the other hand, was not content at all. And in this particular story we're going to read this morning, his wife Jezebel is very happy to step in and take over his discontent and do whatever it takes to cure him of his discontent. The two of them, Ahab and Jezebel, Jezebel wielded considerable power over their people. And in this story, considerable power over a much weaker, powerless person named Naboth. So what is going on in this story? Maybe you too can find some comfort or maybe discomfort in the way the story of Naboth's vineyard retells some of the stories going on around us now in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Responses to the story come in several places in the New Testament. For one, I want to say a little bit about what the Apostle Paul writes to his beloved young friend, Timothy. And then there will be a couple of other things from the New Testament that I will use as response to this story. But first, let's read together. We're going to read from 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. Later, the following events took place. 
Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house. I will give you a better vineyard for it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down on his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said, Why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. She sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letters, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly. Seat two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. The men of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in his city, did as Jezebel had sent word to them, just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of the assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him, and the scoundrels brought a charge against him in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned, he is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Go, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive but dead. As soon as Ahab, Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go down to the vineyard and take possession of it. We can see, of course, the greed here, Ahab was not content. Ahab knew that Naboth was right. It would be against the law for him to give up his <clears throat> ancestral heritage, the vineyard. Ahab knew this was a wrong thing to ask of his neighbor. As king, Ahab should have been exemplary in faithfulness to God. Instead, he was an abysmal failure, weak and without heart, and without a heart for God and God's way. We can find in the Word of God the instructions for finding contentment that is from God and not a false contentment that comes through means such as Ahab did not mind pursuing in Isaiah 55, verses 1 to 2, we find these words, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Jesus tells his followers in the Gospel of John, first from chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And from John chapter 7, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. And then, as I mentioned, the Apostle Paul has some wonderful words writing in his first letter to Timothy, the young missionary. Paul says in chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. Paul advises Timothy in this same chapter 6 
Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Ahab reveals, reveals a heart that has lost its trust in the God he has sworn to serve. He exhibits the opposite of contentment and joy that comes from such trust. Now, just to pause a minute, Scripture does not call us to live in poverty, nor does it teach us that money or making money is evil. What it does teach again and again is what Paul says to Timothy in this same chapter 6 in verse 10. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Another point to remember, contentment is not the same as complacency. Contentment does not mean that we are satisfied with the status quo. Not at all. Indeed, we are always to strive for greater things in our life before God as a way to live in gratitude for God's blessings poured upon us, striving for a higher calling. I'm going to read just a couple of verses from Philippians 4 as an example. Again, Paul writing in Philippians verses that fit very well here. Verse, chapter 4, verses 10 to 13. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it's like to have little, and I know what it's like to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Such beautiful words from Paul. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Christians for centuries have witnessed to the contentment that comes from living in God's way in the world. And for centuries, many generations have expressed the joy that comes in turning over our lives to belief in Christ as both our King and the Lord of our lives. It is the life eternal given to us through the cross whose grace is sufficient for all, who offers true contentment as we follow in the way of Jesus Christ, seeking to live lives worthy of that call. This is the life that begins, I think, on the day that you can truly say, I have taken down all barriers, and now, O oh Christ, I am yours. To finish off this story, if you would like to go to 2 Kings and read chapters 9 and 10, you will read some of the rather dismaying things that happen at the end for Ahab and Jezebel. If you would like to read a little bit more in the chapter that I was reading, I think that you might like to read more of the story when the prophet Elijah comes into the picture and chastises, condemns Ahab for what he has done. So that would be 1 Kings chapter 21, continuing from verse 16. Good day to you all and good reading to you all and now some music to close out our meditation.